Welcome to another Healthy Indoors Minute, and welcome to my crawl space. We're inside the house that I'm building with my family, for my family, and for my grandchildren, hopefully to live in someday. I wanted to share with you some of the thoughts going through my head on really trying to tune the physics and chemistry and microbiology of this studio space that's right above me. So this house is put together a little bit weirdly, and it's partly because we're trying to demonstrate some really interesting things about how you can elegantly affect heat flow, airflow and pressure, moisture and air quality, and all kinds of chemical and microbiology things inside of a home to make it last as long as possible, to make it as healthy as possible. What I have here is a double layered ventilation system for the studio space. The studio space above me most closely resembles, if you're in the building industry, a mixed use commercial space. That would mean like, for example, a mall that we're all familiar with that none of us are going to because of COVID. You've got uh, nail salons that require very specific ventilation things. You've got retail stores, which don't really have anything much going on in them. The sweatiest anybody's gonna be in there is thinking about which coupon they should use. You've got like dance studios that might be inside of a mall. So this is a place that is gonna have to be flexible. And the room above me is gonna be used for playing music or recording music at all hours for dancing. Grace was a dancer uh, before we do what we do now. And for having dance classes for our daughters. So there will be sweatiness happening. We're going to have dance parties in there and that will be sweaty. And what's even worse than that is that there will be little girl dance parties in there and slumber parties in that space. So when all of that stuff happens, exercise classes, maybe one of my daughters decides to start painting and that would be the most reasonable place for her to do that. I want to be able to control the ventilation in that space no matter what happens in there. It's basically a 24 foot wide, 36 foot long, 16 foot high ceilings at one side of it, room that you could do whatever you want with. And if we were perchance to ever sell this place, who knows what the next owner would do with it. So what we've done with these two pieces of ventilation equipment is something kind of interesting and unique. And I just wanted to show it to you because it's very easy to understand. First of all, over here on my left is a Fantech ERV that stands for Energy Recovery Ventilator. This is a machine that has two uh, duct collars that you can see here and two on the other side. It's gonna take stale air from the space above us and take that to outside. And it's gonna bring outdoor air in and deliver that into the space in equal measure so that it's pressure balance. And inside of this box, there is a heat exchanger. Basically, it's called an energy recovery core that's gonna transfer a lot of the temperature and humidity aspects of those two streams of air. So we'll have on the other side of this two insulated duct lengths that go to outside, and then uh, two that are uninsulated that go into the space. Over here, we have a HEPA filtration unit, also from Fantec. This one blows 240 CFM. This one blows 150 CFM. This is called the SER150. And uh, in a previous video, I talked a bit about how to use the fact that they blow different rates. They were trying to do things like induce a pressure differential across the entire space above us and also incorporate what's going on down here. This crawl space is not going to have a dedicated dehumidifier inside of it. There will be a dehumidifier installed in the space above that's uh, an Ultra Air uh, MD33. That's an in-wall dehumidifier. It's a beautiful little compact piece of equipment that pulls 33 pints a day. And I want to be able to cycle the air in this crawl space up through there because clearly I care about this crawl space. It shouldn't have any moisture issues, but just to make sure the air down here doesn't get stale and doesn't have that crawl spacey smell that might result from any number of variables that probably are going to happen over the life of this house, which should be 100 years. To understand this better, here is a diagram. This is the bathroom in the studio space above us. We've got 24 feet wide, 36 feet long. You're seeing a bird's eye view from above here. This is the ERV that's on my left. That is the HEPA filtration unit over here. These each are gonna have a dedicated duct system. So we have two duct systems down here, one for the ERV, one for the HEPA. That might be overkill, some of you are saying right now. Here's why that's not the case in this house. First of all, the amount of air contained within this crawl space and the space above us in the studio is 15,000 cubic feet. If I was to run 150 CFM ERV, 
for an hour, that's going to change out 9,000 cubic feet of air. 150 CFM times 60 minutes in an hour, 9,000 cubic feet per hour. So it takes less than two hours to change out all of the air inside this studio space, including the crawl space, using just the ERV. That is probably more than enough. And in fact, that's at high speed. I'm probably going to use it at lower speeds almost all the time, if at all. There will be periods when nobody is in the space above at all. And so we're probably going to, and at that point, use a very low speed only for a portion of the day because there's no occupancy. So we're taking out for the ERV from the shower in the bathroom, the vocal booth above us, and also from the room at large, all in one stack that you can see in the ductwork video that's going to be coming. That links up with a, another uh, exhaust that's high up in the wall uh, at that same end of the room. And those two uh, join together and come down into the exhaust side of the ERV. Then the supply air comes out and goes to the bottom end of the room here, at the other end of the 36 foot long room. That's going to have a very slight higher pressure here, lower pressure here. That means that air is going to be flowing generally in this kind of direction. Now, 150 CFM, not a lot, even if I was running it at full speed, which is 150 CFM. That's why we've got a fan and a fan in the ceiling. Those are going to help to make sure that the air gets circulated throughout the room. And obviously the mini split that's going to be heating and cooling the space also is going to need that because that also is not putting a whole lot of air. Now the ERV is probably going to be more than enough for what we need. But in the case of little girl party, and you know how smelly little kids can get. No offense, little kids, if you're watching this. Um, in the offense that I have a, a laser tag party with a bunch of my adult male friends and we end up with a bunch of stinky men in the, in the room we might want to activate the HEPA unit. The HEPA unit runs 240 CFM, which is closer to once an hour I could change out all the air in the room. That HEPA unit is going to pick up both VOCs, odors, with a charcoal filter, and also particles, a lot, a lot, a lot of particles. That's what a HEPA filtration unit does. So it's going to filter out 99.97% of the particles down to 300 nanometers in size or bigger. And it probably does smaller than that too, but they don't measure for that with the HEPA certification. Same thing here. We're exhausting from this end of the room and we're going to supply down to this end of the room. So if I'm using both of them in conjunction, I'm changing out a lot of the air at once and I can make sure that even if there are a lot of smelly people exercising, dancing, having a laser tag party, having a slumber party, that this room will not start to pick up on that and that the odor levels will become exacerbated. Now the last piece of this puzzle that is different from the plan that I had originally made in the video where I described the elegant use of pressure imbalances to affect change within the house is that instead of tying the ERV into the HEPA, as I've already described, they're completely separate, what I'm going to do is have a dampered opening on both the ERV and on the HEPA unit so that I can decide exactly how much I want to depressurize the crawl space so that I can pressurize the room above and have the airflow between those two spaces flowing down through the floor. And based on monitoring the quality of the air inside the studio space above, because of the, that's obviously the most important, that's where the people are, then I'll be able to adjust that level by just adjusting the damper. So, I am able to get the full level of control if I actually just put a control here and a control here that is an opening into this crawl space so that I can suck whatever amount of air I want to either filter it or to send it outside through the ERV. This is something that could be used by daycares, by preschools, all kinds of different mixed use spaces. If you have a space where you can run duct work, and that's a major if, then you can do something like this. And the amount of time and effort that this is taking me personally installing this stuff, and I'm not an HVAC professional, is very reasonable for the amount of control that I'm going to get out of the space above. So I hope that this has helped you think through some other scenarios that you might uh, be in in the future. I hope that you also subscribe to Healthy Indoors magazine. Thanks to that magazine for making indoor air quality such a big deal. Please do comment, like, and subscribe. Tune in next time.